They always like the cattle. They like them today, and chances are they always will. Crew, it's that time. Let's ranch it up. Good day, everyone, and thanks for riding with us on this all-new episode of the Ranch It Up Radio Show. I'm Jeff Tigger Earhart. A big thank you goes out to our partners. Welcome aboard Green Acres, Vitelli, Pharmatan, and Imogene Ingredients, the American Gelvie Association, the Tri-State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, and the Fence Post, Abrahamson Rodeo Company, Westway Feed Products, Neogen, Allied Genetic Resources, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, The Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler. Cow Country News, you know, the cow stuff. Heading right to our top news story. This one starts in the chicken business, but could the beef industry take notice? Listen to this one, y'all. A federal judge in Oklahoma gave final approval to a plan calling for Cook Foods Incorporated to pay $15.5 million to settle a class action lawsuit filed by chicken producers accusing the company of fixing prices for broilers. Like I had just said, if it's working in the chicken business, could it work for us? Thoughts on that? Judge Robert J. Shelby of the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Oklahoma set the stage for Cook Foods to end its involvement in a lawsuit that originally included 11 poultry companies alleged to have fixed prices paid for broiler chickens. The order makes Cook Foods the third U.S. poultry processor to reach a settlement with chicken growers this year. And this year alone, Shelby in February approved agreements under which Tyson Foods Incorporated will pay $21 million and Purdue Farms will pay $14.75 million to close their cases. Do I need to say it again? If it worked in the chicken business, will it work for us? Thoughts on that one. Now, earlier in the week, the Bison administration unveiled more than $223 million in grants and loans to meat processors. The USDA received more than 300 applicants for the grants, and in a release, the agency detailed a number of examples of where the government's funds are needed. For example, Montana Premium Processing Cooperative is among the 21 projects receiving $73 million in meat and poultry processing expansion program funds. The startup co-op will provide independent producers in the state of Montana an option for a local USDA inspected meat processing facility in an area currently without one. Another USDA grant will help Leakesville, Mississippi-based cutting-edge meat company increase its capacity and shorten its many-month backlog to process pork and beef for producers in Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, and Mississippi, Greater Omaha Packing in Omaha, Nebraska. We've brought you that story several times. We'll expand its beef processing by 700 head a day, bringing more than 275 jobs to the area and heading to Vermont. Vermont Livestock Slaughter and Processing will be tripling productivity at a multi-species facility connecting farmers in Vermont and the Northeast with individual and business customers. And in other news, while projections around available proteins in the coming months shift and the rate of inflation seems to have lessened in the meat case, consumers are showing long-term changes to their shopping habits. Looking at USDA projections for beef, pork, and poultry production, the analysis of the Daily Livestock Report forecasts that an increase in chicken production will largely offset expected declines in pork and beef production as the new year approaches. Chicken placements, they note, have recently been above year-ago levels by as high as 5%. Beef production for the quarter, meanwhile, is projected down 3% year-over-year. Pork is down 1.5%, but the most recent cold storage report indicates plenty of beef in particular is still existing in freezers. The combined supply of the four main proteins at the start of the fourth quarter was 13% higher than a year ago, according to the report. Now, nevertheless, inflation has pushed consumers into new shopping habits that are expected to prevail for the coming months. Kansas State's meat demand monitor for September indicates that although the rate of inflation in animal proteins has subsided, consumers continue to expect higher retail meat prices next month. Steak and bacon in particular are expected to cost nearly 3% more next month compared to where the current prices exist today. Now, in response, nearly three-quarters of consumers that were surveyed said they have changed their meat-buying habits. 28% have reduced the volume of items purchased while sticking with their favorite brand, cut and package size. 
21% have bought different cuts and 24% purchased smaller packages. This the season when lots of people are shipping calves this time of year. So for our recap today, we're going to start you out the Western Video Market re- recapping. Excuse me, their sale from the end of October, starting with uh, California-based steer calves, five weights coming in at two twenty-one. Then moving on to six weight Oregon-based origin steers, six weights at a dollar eighty-six and a half. Here's a group of 635 weight steers. These are California-based steers. I don't know shot records. I don't know health. I don't know breeding. I've just got weights, and I've got steers, and i got prices. Uh, these 635 weights at $1.95. Now, for some heavier cattle, these are California-based calves. These are steers. Seven weights coming in at $1.90. Here's some Nevada cattle, some high country, high desert cattle, 750 pounds, coming in at 2 bucks. Even, wow, th- that was a big swath. There's actually two pot loads in that run. And then some uh, California based steers, 825 weights coming in at $1.93. On the heifer side from Western Video Market, five and a half weight weaned heifers out of Oregon coming in at $1.85. These are 585 weight weaned heifers from California. They're coming in at $1.82. Here's a swath of California heifers, 665 weights. At $1.80, Nevada-based high desert heifers, 725 weights coming in at $1.77. Some heavier heifers from California, 740 weights at $1.90. For more details, go to WVMCattle.com, and we will be recapping the Thanksgiving sale, the Silver Legacy sale that will take place in Reno, Nevada, the end of November. So be sure to keep tuned for that. Requesting and wanting some more information that maybe you want to hear or you want me to talk about on the show, no worries. Just fire me a message at ranchitupshow at gmail.com. You can text me at 707-726-2420. And remember, crew, our new Sale Barn report is getting ready to launch. So be sure to keep it tuned right here for additional details. Up next, we head to North Dakota where we talk Gelvy and Balancer cattle with Sarah Heinrich from Gustin's Diamond D. Gelvy Ranch. We hear why and how they work and how years and years of data have given them the predictability and cow power of today. So hang tight, crew. The Ranch It Up Radio Show will be right back. Vitelli is a precision livestock company that has set out to solve what we call the Triple Challenge. And the Triple Challenge is really the combination of the need for more protein, coupled with doing it in a more sustainable production practice, doing it in a way that producers can make money. Crew, it's super easy to get a hold of the boss lady and I, and we want to hear any beef that you may have, or maybe just let us know what's happening out there in cow country. 707 Ranch 20 is the hotline. Leave us a voicemail or fire us a text. 707 Ranch 20. It's not every day that you find something so natural that works. Green Acres Angus Genetics are just that. Medium frame cattle that perform on a 100% grass fed and finished diet. Head to green-acres.org. Hey, it's Mark Fanzi with LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, and AuctionTime.com. Give us a call, 844-775-4762. Or look us up online at LivestockMarket.com. Thanks, guys. Gelvian Balancer, crossbreeding that counts. Performance, productivity, profitability. Gelvy and Balancer cattle deliver the value. Gelvy and Balancer, smart, reliable, profitable. The continental breed of choice. Feeding Pharmaten at weaning time is perfect for... Coxidia control and then excellent with that transition to solid feed and seeing their weights really hold up as they put cattle through their weaning ration. I'm a geneingredients.com, home of Pharmaten. Let's get it on! Cattle battle. You have found the Ranch It Up radio show and congratulations. I tell you what, we pack about as much information as we can into... A 30-minute program, so here we go. You shipped your steers and heifers, right? Or you're making plans to do that. Or you are purchasing some steers and heifers. Or you are filling the lots with steers and heifers. Maybe you're weaning. Maybe you're looking at turning maybe bulls out here in the next uh, few weeks around Thanksgiving time for for your fall calving herd. This is where you decide if your genetic packages that you purchased last year, if they worked. Did you get the results that you wanted? But remember, that's only half of the battle, right? What can we do different or who should we look to or look for doing doing business with and why? Where should we 
purchase our next bows and replacements from and why. Sarah and Richie Heinrich and their family, Gustin's Diamond D. Gelby Ranch, Gelby and Balancer Genetics Bows and Replacements. They work and they say this is why. Now, Sarah, this is great to catch up with you. Finally got you on the show. You mentioned to me off air that the program had started back in 1982. Just kind of give a little history lesson here. Started back in 1982 when your dad and his brother, your Uncle Al, noticed that their brother-in-law was getting increased weaning weights by using Gelvy Genetics. Heavier weights a lot of times means more dollars, or we hope it does. And that grew into raising a few bulls, and that grew into selling a few bulls private treaty, and then that grew into where it is today, the annual production sale And since it all started, like I said, back in 82, it always was Gelvy Cattle. It's Gelvy Cattle today, and you say it's always going to be Gelvy Cattle. And from start to finish, my compliments, you know exactly what they're doing. Yes, and so that would be very correct. I grew up in the program. These cows have been here for 40 years now, and all I can say is that they have, a, there's a reason why they're here and there's a, they're breed up. We can talk fertility. We can talk docility. We can talk maternal traits on these cows. These cows, we have a mature cow size. And according to the U S meat animal research center data, it's showing the Gelby females have the smallest mature cow size of the four major continental breeds. These cows are doing a lot with what they have. We haven't pulled a creep feeder out in 40 years. Oh, there wow. has not been a creep feeder on our place. Because these cows go out, they have their calves, they bring in big calves, we let our genetics prove themselves. And then I really just, their breed up has been phenomenal. We've had the best breed up that we've had um, ever. And so I think that's really a true testament to the maternal traits on these cows. Because if you're able to have a cow lay down, calf early, bring in a big calf in the fall, and she's going to breed right back. I mean, isn't that the game that we all want to play? Do you know that it is your responsibility as a seed stock producer to change what I'm doing? I, I hate to, I mean, it is. It doesn't fall on the feedlot guys. It doesn't fall on backgrounders. It doesn't fall on me, on the cow-calf man, the commercial guy. It falls on you because you have access to the genetics and you are providing those to me. So where does Gelvy fit? What are your customers saying? I'm talking about those people that are feeding the calves when... When we hear us commercial breeders that we got to make changes or we need to add more more carcass traits into our cattle, we need to get more consistent, we need to do this, we need to do that, we're listening to what the consumer is saying, but now to make those changes, we're coming to you. So what are you seeing from the results of your genetics moving into the commercial cow herds, ultimately being fed, being slaughtered, and being served on a plate? Well, we have been following that very closely, and I will say carcass has become a, definitely a focus for us, and that is something that we have really probably honed in on more in the last 10 years than the years prior, just because you're absolutely right. We are listening to the, what the consumers want. We're also trying to listen to what our customers want, and so calving yeast has been another big trait that we have really been following hard in trying to make sure that you're providing um, that calving yeast experience, you're providing that low birth weight, and you're just giving those producers a chance to you know, have more, I guess, quote unquote, live calves on the ground, less calving difficulties and those type of things. When we talk about the carcass data, that's something that we've been following through on our program. And so when we are from, I guess you could say, start to finish from the time that these calves hit the ground, they get an EID tag. And then we have been owning them all the way through to slaughter because we want to get that yield grade data back. We want to get that carcass data back. And we want to be able to use that information that we're getting to really hound in as far as like what bloodlines we need to be using, which ones we need to see improvement on, because we obviously want to give the consumer the best eating experience and we want to be competitive in the marketplace. And so that has been something that we have really tried to focus in on in the last decade. Give me the reason of why you think a person should consider using Gelvy balance or Gelvy influenced genetics either on the maternal side that you have talked so much about or on the terminal side? I feel like the docility in the program really can't be beat. Those cattle are easy to work with. And when you have docile cattle, they're going to gain better and things are just going to move a lot smoother, obviously, in your operation. And I think that that is a trait that a lot of producers are really focused in on as well, is just that that well-behaved, that well-tempered, that docility um, is something that really drives me towards the breed. Another thing that really drives me towards the breed is obviously the maternal traits. I think it speaks a lot that we haven't pulled a creep feeder out in 40 years, that those cows are out there, 
and they are doing their job and they are doing it on their own. And these cows have done, there's a reason why they've been on our place for 40 years. Like I said, they've really proven themselves. And the other thing is, I think that producers really should be taking advantage of is the crossbreeding. Because if you have an Angus-based herd or a Red Angus-based herd, and you're going to throw on a Gelby bull on those cows, you can take advantage of that heterosis and you can take those extra pounds to town and you can capitalize on that. Because if you can take more pounds to town, we all know that that generates more dollars. And so whether it's a Gelby bull that you want to use or whether it's a Gelby influence based herd that you want to have on the maternal side of things, I really think that it would make a big difference in your operation because you should be benefiting from that crossbreeding if you do um you know, I, I just think that that crossbreeding is really where it's at. And that's really where those extra dollars are able to come from. Hey, before we uh, we sign off and I cut you loose, I got to ask this. You and your husband are, are now obviously very active in the program and making a lot of the decisions. And the sale was originally in Mandan, North Dakota. And now it has moved to Medina, North Dakota, just to tick over an hour away. Now, was that a tough thing to do? How did the customers take moving the sale to a new location? The sale was Gus and Sammy Gelby. I grew up south of Mandan, and we did host the sale there for many years, and we had a live auction sale. When my husband and I got married, um, I think we all knew that that transition was going to take place as my folks and my parents got older. And so in we've now this will be our third production sale at our ranch in Medina. And so we took that on because Richie and I have a lot of a lot of faith in the Gelby breed, a lot of faith in the cattle. It's a program that I obviously grew up in and don't know any different of, and I have a lot of passion for. And so we did move the sale over to our place. And so we do have a, a program, you can say, that is in two different locations, but the cattle are managed as the same herd. So whether that be um, a vaccination program, a feeding program, a mineral program, everything is the same with all of these cows, um, no matter which location they're at. My folks will be hauling cows out in the summer out here to have them bred to specific bulls and be um, pasture cleaned up to specific bulls. And we'll be hauling cows over there to have ours cleaned up to specific bulls. So it works very much fluid and it's very much uh, one herd. It's just in two different locations. And after weaning, all of the bull calves are started at the um, at our ranch in our bullpen development program. And they are all carried through in that same way throughout the fall and into the winter months before sale. And so we really tried to keep things the same as much as we possibly could. So same dates, uh, same people, same faces. We always say that we just want our customers to feel um, welcome. And our customer base was absolutely phenomenal in regards to um, making that switch and making that transition. And they were well aware, too, that um, as my folks and my dad and my mom are aging and you know that they're maybe not raising quite as many cows as what they had before. Or Richie and I are becoming more involved either way you want to look at it. Um, they were very well aware that there might be a change or a transition taking place. And so while we were concerned about changing that sale location, I will say our customer base was extremely faithful and followed us. And um, the transition was much, was very, very smooth. And so we are, are thankful and we're grateful for that. And I, I would thank every customer out there because, um, you know, I've been involved in the program since I was a little girl. My husband has been involved in the program since he got married. And so the people were the same. It was just in a different location. And our customers understood that. And I'm grateful for that. People wanting some more information, where do we go? Where do we look? Gelby.org is a great place to be headed to. And yes, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to a breeder that's near you because I know a lot of the seed stock breeders across the nation would love to talk about Gelby cattle. They'd, they'd love to help you or guide you through it. And so if there is a breeder that's near you, you can head to the AGA website, find a breeder that's near you, contact one of the staff members. We would all love to visit and talk to you more about the breed. Sarah, thank you so much for a great conversation. Truth be told, Sarah and I were on the phone for about an hour just catching up and visiting, so it was wonderful having this conversation with you. I will add this. Sarah and her husband, Richie, and their four kids, they farm and ranch full-time. In addition to, Sarah is the farm director for KFGO 790. So as you can about imagine, their day begins awfully darn early, and it ends awfully darn late. So thank you again for the time. Now, as Sarah mentioned, Gelvy.org is a great place to start to find out just to tick more information. If you want to know more, find out some breeders near you or, or want to find the contact information of said specific breeders, you can go to Gelvy.org 
If you want to know a little bit more about the Gustins, the Gustin Diamond D. Gelby Ranch, their program, a little bit more information, go to Gustins, uh, that's per, uh, plural, excuse me, GustinsDiamondD.com. All right, GustinsDiamondD.com. And notice whomever we talk to each and every week and what we talk about, the answer is always the same. The, the recommendation is always the same, and that's the T word, and that is talk. Yeah, talk to people. Ask those questions. Get answers and ultimately make the decisions, right? Boom. There it is. We've got Kirk is hanging out. We're going to check in with him in just a little bit to get a market recap. So, crew, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We've got more of the Ranch It Up radio show. It's coming up right after this. Want to add just a little bit of spice to your event, your customer appreciation supper, your banquet, your meeting? Oh, yeah. Well, bring in us, Beck and I, your keynote speakers, hosts, MCs, a host couple. We'll make them laugh, even cry tears of joy. Call us today. You're looking at those calves and you're seeing all the hard work pay off. Vaccinations and herd health and management, genetics, marketing, and nutrition. Keep nutrition simple with Westway Feed products. You can count on Westway. Westwayfeed.com. Cattle market reports to various news stories. The Tri-State Livestock News covers it all. Check us out at tsln.com. Subscriptions or advertising, call Tracy Hawk at 406-951-3211. The Tri-State Livestock News, what ranchers read. Neogen, the partner you need. Some of our best products and improvements come from producers. And if they've got an idea on on maybe how we can help, we'd like to hear what they have to say. Contact us directly. Go to neogen.com. We're more than happy to help. Neogen, the partner you now have. You asked for it, you got it. Watch the Cowboy Channel anytime, anywhere with the Cowboy Channel Plus. Live stream the Cowboy Channel or watch your favorite PRCA rodeos on demand. Classic PRCA rodeos added weekly. Get the Cowboy Channel Plus for only $9.99 a month or save 25% by signing up for a full year. Visit CowboyChannelPlus.com to sign up and start streaming today. Welcome back, everyone, and thanks for keeping it tuned right here to the Ranch It Up radio show. As always, it's that time when we check in with Kirk Tonsbach and the numbers. Kirk, what's going on? Uh, good morning, Tigger. I had a, a good day in the market this week. As of Friday, October 28th, November feeders closed at 177.85, down 32.5 cents on the week, with the CME feeder index at 175.85, up $3.08, so a very nice we can cash. That leaves our basis at a negative 202. December live cattle closed 152.92 and a half. That's up 52 and a half cents on the week with cash trading 150 in the south and 152 to 53 in the north, leaving the five area weighted average on steers at 151.84, up $1.78. Our basis was negative $1.16 versus the December live cattle futures contract. The weekly slaughter was 668,000. That's down 5,000 on the week and equal on a year over year basis. Choice boxes printed 263.26 in the Friday report, up $9.55. So very nice movement in boxes. Wrap this up December corn closed the week at $6.79 and three quarter cents. That's down three and three quarter cents on the week. Hey guys, Mark Van Z with livestockmarket.com. Thank you to everybody who got on and bid or bought hay or cattle on that November 2nd online auction. It was a big one. Over 6,800 bales of hay sold on that sale. Um, If you want to go see the results for the hay or the cattle, you can go check those out now on the website. Uh, To see results, actually go over to auctiontime.com and then click on hay or livestock on the top tab. Then on the left side of the menu, you just need to hit results. And you can select the November 2nd sale date. Um, I'm trying to work right now on calculating averages from last week, uh, at least on the hay. And hopefully I can bring those to you guys next week and kind of tell you what we're seeing right now in, like, the cash hay market. Next on the calendar for us is the December 7th special bull cow and replacement online auction. Uh, Cutoff to list cattle on that sale is November 23rd. So if you want to get cattle on that sale or you just have more questions about it or whatever, give us a call, 
888-456-4762, or you can check us out online at livestockmarket.com. I tip my hat to you from one legend to another. And before we sign off, a big tip of the hat to all the deer hunters that are getting ready to sport their blaze orange. Maybe some already are or have, or you're getting geared up regardless. Be safe and good luck. And now that is going to wrap it up for today. A big thank you from our crew to yours to start out with Sarah Heinrich with Gustin's Diamond DLV Ranch. Thank you so much for the time. Mark Vanzi with LivestockMarket.com giving us an update each and every week. If you haven't gone on there, you need to head to LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, or AuctionTime. Dot com. Kirk Donsbach with Stonex Financial Incorporated and No Worries Crew, the boss lady. She'll be back soon enough. A big thank you to all of our partners. Welcome aboard and thank you again to Green Acres, Vitelli, Pharmatan, and Imogene Ingredients, the American Gelvy Association, Tri State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, the Fence Post, Abrahamson Rodeo Company, Westway Feed Products, Neogen, Allied Genetic Resources, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, The Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler and crew. So glad y'all came with us one more time, just one more time as we ranch it up. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook at Ranch It Up Show. Each and every week we have a number of updates, so check back often if you would. Our email, RanchItUpShow at gmail.com. And you can call and text us 24-7 at 707-R-A-N-C-H-2-0. Spread the good word and join us again next week where it's always Tigger approved. Stay ranchy and ranch it up. <laughs>